The big tech layoff put thousands of qualified candidates to the job market. However, the good news is that there's still tens of thousands of companies that are still hiring. But the biggest problem is most of the companies who are hiring right now, they're not famous fan companies, Google, Meta, Netflix. And most of the companies we haven't heard of, and we don't know if they're reputable, if the financial situation is good, and if we accept the offer, are we going to get laid off again within three months? And then you will start the stressful job hunting journey again. This sounds so brutal and stressful, but if you follow the right strategy to select the next top company to work for in 2023, you are able to have no stress and focus on building the right product and serve the right customers. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top five rules to select the top company to work for in 2023. Make sure to stay until the end of this video where I'm going to share with you the resources to get connected with recruiters for free. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a direct product and featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, please go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. If you want to learn the most effective way to become a product manager, make sure to like this video so that I have the motivation to give more free tips like this. Now here are the five rules to select the top company to work for in 2023. Rule number one, join the recession-proof industry. Some industries are going downturn during recession, but some industries, they provide very stable services regardless of economics going up or down. For example, the healthcare industry actually is hiring a lot of people right now. And we have seen like Google product manager join health tech companies as we're speaking. And educational companies also a good one for you to check out right now because when people are laying off, they're thinking about how to upscale themselves so they're not going to get laid off again in the future. I would also check out some type of fintech companies, for example, Intuit. It's crazy, everybody pay taxes. So Intuit is the owner of TurboTax. Everybody pay taxes and you have to file taxes. And so it's a resource everybody have to use regardless economical up or down. So check out those kind of recession-proof industry. You're going to see lots of great opportunities and see a stable income and stable job in the coming years. Rule number two, join the revenue generating core product within the company. In a huge company and there are different departments, some departments are responsible for generating the core revenue and core product. For example, our student David Lin who joined Meta and he's working on ads. And Meta definitely makes so much money from ads. Even if you have seen the co-workers in other departments in Meta was laid off, but his position is extremely safe. Another core product I recommend you guys check it out is a cloud product. For example, for Amazon and Microsoft layoffs, majority of the teams around the cloud product are not impacted because cloud is very profiting business and whoever runs the application on cloud they are not going to remove the application from cloud so suddenly and for example i was doing sherry wen who joined microsoft as a product manager working on azure cloud product and her position is extremely safe and even if she just had a baby well i've heard several times women told me that they had maternity leave when they came back they were laid off so sherry made a great decision to join azure within microsoft so that her position is much safer compared with other part of microsoft 10,000 employees layoff Make sure to check out the free training from Sherry where she talk about how she transitioned from software engineer into product management and join a Microsoft. I'm also going to link the video in the description of this video. If you like the tips I provide so far, please make sure to hit the like button because it's the only way that YouTube algorithm recognizes me. Rule number three, join the long-term strategic initiative within the company, which is the core revenue generation team is going to impact the 10-year roadmap within the company. Now, let me give you specific examples. When I launched the 5G Edge computing product in collaboration with AWS and Azure, my team was the only team which was hiring during the April 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic when most companies were freeze hiring because the product we're launching is going to impact the revenue in the coming 10 years. So the CEO said they have to make sure our team continue to grow or the company will suffer in the long run. 
And during the layoff season in February 2023, also an L recently joined Meta and because he's also going to work on the long-term strategy initiative within Meta. So do some research regarding long-term strategy initiative within companies. Rule number four is to analyze the financial situation of the company. For example, some startups, they are VC-backed, but they never generate positive cash flow. And when the VC funding dries out, they're going to immediately go bankrupt. So therefore, I want you guys to ask their financial situation when you interview with those companies. Guess what? The VC funding in the last quarter is 50% less compared with a year ago. So lots of startups who never generate revenue is going to go bankrupt very quickly. Rule number five, study the company culture. One of the goals to join the new company, have a stable income, is that you don't want to get laid off again, even if the company's cash flow is stable. Another reason people get laid off was because politics within the company and silos and you don't know how to build relationships with people around you. So before you join any company, I will look up the employees on LinkedIn to understand who currently is working there. Do they have the same kind of diverse culture and from where you came from? Do they also have people currently working on H1B or more women in the companies? And those people are representing who you are. Once you join the company, you can form a relationship with these people. But what if you're the only female, only minority within the company? It's likely you're not going to stay in the company for long. In the first episode of Product Insider Podcast, our speaker who is a director of product growth at Stash talks about the importance of building relationship with other minorities, other women, so that they can be the advocate for you as well. So check out more information of our podcast. I'm also going to link in the description as well. A lot of candidates challenge is that even if they have great experience, but they cannot land an interview, or they have no experience and people do not even want to offer them an interview opportunities. What if I tell you that I can connect you with the recruiters directly? I have a great network of recruiters who are looking to recruit the best talent in the industry right now. So I'm able to connect you with them for free and you can directly submit your information in the form right now and link in the description of this video so that whenever we have a perfect match, we're going to connect you with the directors through email introduction. Go to the link in the description and fill in the form right now. Make sure to check out the Product Manager Interview Questions playlist to get ready for your upcoming interviews and like and subscribe for this channel for more free tips. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMXerter.io. Talk soon.